Hello, I'm Bill Bullard with RCAF USA, the voice of the independent cattle producer in the United States of America. Well, it's good to know history. Two decades ago, we succeeded in including both mandatory country of origin labeling, or MCOOL, and a ban on packer ownership and control of livestock in the U.S. Senate version of the 2002 Farm Bill. And when the Senate and House bills were brought together in conference to be merged, the packers turned up the heat. So around midnight, Senate leaders asked RCAF USA to choose one or the other. They said we couldn't have both. But we stood our ground and said both measures are needed to protect cattle producers from ongoing market distortions. So the Senate leaders went back to conference and negotiated a final farm bill. And it included mandatory country origin labeling. But the ban on packer ownership and control was replaced with a multi-million dollar study to determine if livestock markets were being distorted. So fast forward two decades, mandatory country of origin labeling for beef has been repealed and there is no ban on packer ownership or control of cattle. So we're back to the pre-2002 era, but this time our cattle market is fully dysfunctional and the big packers are still trying to convince everyone it isn't. So as we're wallowing in today's dysfunctional marketplace, the debate is this, should we restore competition by forcing the big packers to compete for at least half of their weekly cattle needs? Or should we just stay the course and allow the packers to keep doing what they're doing to our cattle industry? Now the big packers are telling us exactly what they're doing. They're using contracts called Alternative Marketing Arrangements, or AMAs, in lieu of competing for cattle to achieve cost savings, marketplace efficiency, and a more consistent and higher quality product. But today's big packer rhetoric sounds historically familiar, and indeed it is. Two decades ago, Packers enlisted Sparks Company Incorporated to fight against the ban on Packer ownership and control of livestock. Sparks argued that the vertical integration in the poultry industry and the vertical integration then occurring in the hog industry were achieving cost savings, marketplace efficiency, and more consistent and higher quality products. In other words, the exact same arguments the Packers are using today to defeat Senate Bill 949, the Grassley Tester 5014 bill, are their arguments first used to chickenize the poultry industry, then to chickenize the hog industry, and now to chickenize your cattle industry. And right now they're chickenizing your cattle industry cowboy style. We have a copy of one of their instruments of chickenization. It's one of those so-called alternative marketing arrangements, AMAs, and it's one that the meatpacking lobby is telling all of you cowboys to support. This one's between one of the nation's largest beef packers and one of the nation's largest feedlots. This instrument of chickenization goes like this. The feedlot purchases the cattle. The packer reimburses the feedlot for 100% of the cost of the cattle. The feedlot purchases the feed for the cattle. The packer reimburses the feedlot for all feeding and grow costs of the cattle. There's no independent cattle feeder that can compete against a feedlot with this alternative marketing arrangement or AMA, particularly if feed costs are increasing. Now this explains why we've already lost 75% of all independent cattle feeders. This AMA has nothing to do with cost savings for producers, creating efficiencies for consumers, for improving consistency and quality. No, this AMA does one thing and it does it very well. It transfers control over the live cattle supply chain from independent cattle producers to the beef packers. It chickenizes your US cattle industry. So everyone has been hoodwinked into believing that AMAs benefit everyone in the industry. Even the multi-million dollar livestock and meat marketing study commissioned back in 2002 said in 2007 that smaller feedlots and smaller producers are substantially more dependent on the competitive cash market than are large producers. So the question is, who are those smaller producers? Well, the study defines them this way. If you are not among the nation's 25 largest feedlots, then you are a small feedlot. And if you are not among the nation's 25 largest cow-calf producers, then you're a small cow-calf producers. It is this study favoring the very largest of feedlots and cow-calf producers, as evidenced by this absurd distinction between large and small producers, 
that the meatpacking lobby is now waving in front of Congress to urge them to defeat Senate Bill 949, the Grassley Tester Bill. You need to fight back. And to do that, you need to call your members of Congress to tell them the future of your U.S. cattle industry depends on their support of immediate reforms like the Grassley Tester Bill. So call your members today at 202-224-3121. And please go to our website at r-calfusa.com to get more information and to become a supporting member to help us preserve your U.S. cattle industry. With that, thank you and goodbye.